Action crew, and I'm here on a real big return coming off of our hiatus for Schmobe. So thank you so much for hanging out with us on this fine, fine Wednesday evening. And I'm here joined today with one of my favorite IG competitors, one of my favorite competitors in Schmobe in general. It's Miss Brown Star herself, Mara Knopek. It's Wednesday? Oh man, I was totally <laughs> okay. messed up. I thought it was Saturday. I have no idea. What is time, timey, wimey thing? I don't know. I don't know. All right, Mara, thank you so much for hanging out with me today for Schmobates. And Schmobates, if you don't know, Schmobate is our Schmodown themed debate show here at Call to Action, where we answer Schmodown's biggest questions, asking the most important questions that need to get answered, nay, argued on every single week. Mara, you're a big fan of debating. You're kind of like a big deal in the debating circles, are you not? If you say so. Um, I do very <laughs> much enjoy it. Uh, a nice verbal spar every once in a while uh, based on mutual respect mm -hmm. and also me always being right is usually really fun. Of course, like obviously, right? And I'm sure you and uh, your piece of man candy, you know, Dan Merle, obviously, you know, might go head to head every once in a while, right? Well, when when the time calls for it, like uh, in a debate show situation, <laughs> that could uh, that could absolutely be a possibility. But luckily, Dan and I are cut from the same cloth and have had very few disagreements ever. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. I'm a little jealous, to be honest. Uh, you know, I'm horrible at debating, even though I host a show. That's why I host it and actually not participate. But that's just me. All right. Well, let's just kind of get to it. We're going to bring on some of our competitors today. And we are going to bring on our first competitor. He's actually been on the Schmobies a handful of times. And he ain't too shabby of debating. His name is Frankie Numbers. Official Schmodown after show host of the rundown. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Good, good. How are you? Good, good. Glad to be here. Well, I know it's it's so healthy indeed. You're a runner, <laughs> right? You're still running? Are you running outside still a lot? Uh yeah, I did go for a run today and it was rough. <laughs> it was rough. For it was a rough one. For how long? What was the distance? Uh two and a half miles. Just a real quick hmm. one. Yeah. That would literally take me like an hour, like minimum. <laughs> I'm sure on you full, do great. <laughs> on full sprint, I'd be like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, you, like I said, you're no stranger to debating, obviously not on Schmobates, but especially on the rundown. You you like to back things up with numbers and facts. So going into this, you must be uh, extra motivated to prove your points. Is that right? You know, a little bit. A little bit, and uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, I I did do some preparing today with some mm -hmm. numbers. We'll see where they come into play. So okay. th that'll be fun. Oh, for sure, for sure. You're gonna be going up against a really not uh, maybe not super well known competitor. You maybe some of you guys in the chat might have heard of him. His name is Mr. John Roca. So, are you intimidated at all going against such a big personality like him? When I've, you know, I've been doing this for so long. Um, John does not intimidate me. John does not. John, John's great. John's great. And uh, I, when when I found out this would be my opponent, uh, I, I I perked up and I said, "Oh, this is this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a real good one." So I'm excited for it. All right, That's an awesome position to take. <laughs> ears perking up. Can ears perk up? That's what I kind of want to know. Like anatomically, yeah, you can't see, you know? but it's happening. Yeah. It's like, do you have like elvish ears? Like. Perk? No? One of no. them, yeah. One of them, yeah. Oh, jealous. Jealous. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to bring on our second competitor. He is John the Outlaw of Outlaw Nation, celebrating his one-year anniversary of the Outlaw Nation channel. So, guys, definitely check it out. Let's welcome him to the show, Mr. John Roca. John? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hello there. You know, I was uh, reading a book on Orson Welles. So I didn't know that uh, uh, we are we can hold on. Let me. Uh, Frank is an idiot. Yeah, good ending. Good ending. Good ending for that chapter. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good to see you. Thank you so much for having me on Schmobates, having me back again. I've been both a competitor and a judge, so it's exciting to be back. Uh, Alex asked me to step in at the last minute. He's, she said, uh, Frankie Numbers is looking for an opponent. I'm sure the person who stepped aside and could do it thought it was too much of an easy victory in his life. So they asked me to step in, and I was like, well, why not? Let's go toe-to-toe. 
with Frankie numbers. Uh, so I'm excited to be here. It's great to see you, Alex. Great to see you, Mara. Uh, much love to your man, man candy there. <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> I, call, and uh, I call my husband man candy. He's literally listed under my phone as man candy. And wow. <laughs> he is. He is like, he Shout is out like, to I, you there, Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually like I I even call my mom's fiance. I even call. I was like, "Hey, mom, how's your piece of man candy doing?" <laughs> like, it's like I, I can't help it. It's just like. No, I think it's very sweet. No, I think it's very sweet. I think all of us would like to be seen as man candy men. <laughs> men, do that, for sure. So uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I, I don't know how this is going to go, but it's going to be fun to 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 kick around these uh, topics and go toe to toe with numbers. Um, I didn't do as much preparing as numbers. Clearly, uh, I just was uh, subbing at the last minute. So I hope I give a good enough of a of a fight here for the kid. Well, we're going to be our. Where well, you guys are going to be actually arguing questions themed on the award show that's going to be coming up later this week. So, not not a big deal. Very topical for sure. Uh, do you guys have? Um, well, Roka, do you have any like? Are you kind of kind of trepidatious about answering these questions? Are these like your no. major predictions going into this? Or are you like, man, this is what I want to happen? Or do you feel like this is more like what you wish to happen? No, I think I think for the, all three of the questions, I answered what I truly believe uh, uh, are the answers in my heart. So there was no issue with me choosing anything mm-hmm. I chose. So no, no conflicts with Frank with the ones that he chose at all. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Everyone that was nominated for these, uh, you know, these questions and these awards, 100% deserve it. That's for dang sure. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get to it. If you guys are not familiar with Schmobates, first of all, thank you so much for hanging out with us and, you know, watching this debate show, kind of checking it out. But let me go ahead and explain the rules, which are very necessary to kind of chat about. Three questions will be debated tonight with the winner being determined by the guest Go host and the ghost judge, which is Mara and our mystery ghost host, that's going to be re, uh, shown at the very end of tonight's episode. If there's a tie, the audience vote serves as a tiebreaker. Jake Yacoveta is actually going to be providing the links in this chat as well as on Twitter, so definitely check it out over there. Uh, the round format will be as follows 60 second opening statements uh, for four minutes of open debate, followed by 60 second closing statements as well. For the final round is determined by the host flipping a coin and the winner must win two out of the three rounds to be declared the winner with each competitor having one 30 second of uninterrupted time extension that can be used at any time throughout tonight. So mm, it's going to get rowdy just a little bit, just a wee bit rowdy. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the first question. Now, the first question, we're going to be starting with Frankie providing his opening statement first. And Mara, will you please read tonight's question? Our first question is, who should win Player of the Year? Big, big one. Yes, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> you know, no pressure whatsoever. None. Um, absolutely not. Let me see if I can pull up that overlay real quick again. I'm sorry about that. And there it is. Thank you so much, Jake. All right. So, yes, 60 seconds on the clock. Frank, are you ready? Ready. All right. Starting now. So I chose for this debate Adam Collins to win Player of the Year. What Adam Collins did this year as a rookie uh, is something that no player has done in quite some time, and in some and in some cases, never have done. Uh, not even um, Dan Merle, Ethan Irwin, Bibiani, uh, those those greats of the game. Uh, some of the things that Adam Collins did, like winning the horror free for all um, in a very specialized free for all, uh, was a tremendous feat that he accomplished this season. I would argue that a specialized free for all is maybe is a little tougher than a general free for all that we've had in past years. Uh, Adam Collins, as Player of the Year, I think is a well-deserved honor, and that is why I chose Adam Collins. Done. All right. All right. Yielding the rest of your time. Perfect. All right. So Adam Collins, definitely no big deal. Pretty fantastic competitor all around. John, we got to hear your pick of the question. You have 60 seconds on the clock starting now. Well, the question is who should win player of the year, not player of the last three months. And I think that's an important thing to look at when you're looking at this category. And for me, my answer is Jeff Snyder. 
Jeff Snyder has been an incredible player the entire year. I think lost only once or twice this year, but b stormed through the uh, the Schmodown tournament on both the singles and the team side, and did, which Bibiani did last year, but he did that one extra thing that Bibiani didn't do last year, and that is win a belt when he got to that final, and he's been an incredible player. He has done it both in person. He's done it uh, 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 on the internet. He's done it at home. He has been phenomenal when a lot of people counted him out. He burrowed through both of these tournaments and, sh and reminded everybody once again of what a stellar player he is. Plus, worked really well with Ten his seconds. character, showed you exactly what he can do. And where Collins just repeated feats, Snyder went the next step above his repeat and got that belt. And time right on the money. All right. Well, these are both obviously fantastic picks, and I can't wait to see them argued. I know I personally have debated them many a time, but we're going to put our personal, you know, biases aside. And real quickly, I do want to highlight some things in the chat. And there's a lot of love for both of these competitors. You know, Snyder, um, you know, Ben saying boom goes there. It's a dynamite. And there's a little, you know, mention of some Ed Harris. And I don't know what that is. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> oh, shit, Adam Collins. Uh, you know, some love for both of the rare competitors here. You've got this, John. And Tim Sims, the fantastically famous Tim Sims, says Snyder, no controversy at all. So mm -hmm. you definitely got uh, both got some work cut out for you. Mara, what do you think of these opening statements? I think that uh, there's... There's quantity and quality on both sides. Um, mm -hmm. I think there were some very different tactics taken. So I'm very curious to see uh, when they go head to head, how if they choose to stay in their lane or if they uh, expand mm -hmm. their their tactics a little bit. So I'm this is very curious. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Who's going to play defense and who's going to play offense? We're going to find out in ten seconds. You guys have. Four minutes on the clock to really impress us and get all those facts down, starting now. Well, right off the bat, Adam Collins, he earned 30 points for his fashion compared to Jeff Snyder's 20. Mm -hmm. And you could say that Adam Collins, without that run in singles, uh, the singles tournament, that is, there's no way corruption has a shot at the at the title uh, at the end of the year. We know that Inner Geekdom, what Mike and Chance did for corruption, but it's not without Adam Collins, that they even get close to that mark. Uh, without without Adam Collins, they're, they're, they're done for the year. So he was a huge asset, especially when Mike faltered in that first round. Chance only got a couple of rounds. It was Adam Collins who essentially put the faction on his back because from there on out, it was him in the singles tournament and then the couple of matches he had in the team's tournament that helped them get that victory in the faction title. Well, see, I would counter and say that uh, uh, fact, corruption had Mike, had Chance, had other people, had Marisol, other people who were able to give them points as well. Uh, of course, Marisol along with Collins. But when you look at what Snyder was in, rock, there is no more, there's no bigger seller dweller in the Schmodown than it was the rock stars at the beginning of the year. And Jeff Snyder, you could argue, did way more. Yes, he earned less points than Collins, but in percentage wise, he did more for his faction. Then Collins did for his faction. Yes, Collins got him over the finish line. Congratulations to him. But Snyder did way more into bringing the conversation for Roxy. Alex Damon got a couple of victories, but it was Jeff Snyder doing the work uh, load of that entire faction to drag them even close to placing in the top four. Pretty incredible work that he did. Plus, the murderer's row of people that he defeated here. Paul, Former champions, Paul Oyama, Mark Riley, uh, uh, Ethan Irwin avenging. He avenged, he avenged all his losses rolling through here. Lost to Adam Collins for sure in that, on that Tyler Perry, but who doesn't lose to people when they roll Tyler Perry? And on the team side of things, he, he, handled, went, he took care of business here against Adam Collins, Marisol McKee, against Category 9, against Finals. And Paul Oyama, again, beat him twice in yeah. one year. So Here's also, here's also what champion. Adam Collins did in his singles run. He set numerous records. He set single season record for the most correct answers, single yeah. season record for highest accuracy rate, all single season home. record yes. for total points. Yep. It still all counts. You, you played from home too, John. Yeah, and, 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 and you would have taken those victories. And live. And I know you would have taken those victories. Between playing at home and playing live. And if you can do it in both arenas, you deserve Adam Collins right. set many, many records my this year that probably won't ever be touched again. He did it. This year, compared to Jeff's, did not 
did not set any records. He played well, but not set any records. Why? Because Adam Collins was ahead of him every step of the way in that singles tournament. Not the doubles tournament. Adam, Adam Collins only missed seven questions the entire year in, in the singles tournament and only missed one question in his team's run, which, granted, they played a great game against the odd couple. It was a tight match. Mm-hmm. But in the end, Adam Collins played better overall the okay. entire year, and he has a singles title to show for it. Jeff does not. That's the premier title in the league. Oh, you're saying that's the premier title. You're saying that to all the champions that the singles title is the premier title in the league. The that's- singles title is so, the one that's most coveted. So whenever anybody comes on your show who's a champion of any other division, they can feel insulted by the fact that you said the singles champion. They can feel however they want to feel, but everyone well, knows sure the singles title is the one that everyone's gunning for. Here's another thing you got to fact. That's why a headline spectacular. Counted out Jeff Snyder. Didn't know what to expect from him. Sure, Adam did it in one tournament. Congratulations. Got there. As Jeff did it in two tournaments, son. Went to finals in both. The team's that tournament count. is more of a glorified number oh, one contender yeah, bracket. It's not it's, 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 it's not as big as past year's tournaments. Oh, tournament so it's still a great run. One contender by the time it's over. Many, <laughs> many teams have had that same type of run. So yes, he's like, but who has done it and gotten all the way and won that belt? We're talking about this year. We're talking about this year. I am. And time, 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 time. I I will mute you, sir. I will mute you. Feel free. Mm -hmm. I will. Don't threaten. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. That was fantastic. That was really great. And both of you guys actually made really solid points overall, ranging from what they meant to the faction, their growth as competitors, as characters over the year, and all the way to how they work in their faction as well. So there's a lot of different, uh, there's quite a variety of different points being made. Mara, was there any particular uh, point that really kind of got you leaning on either way? Not necessarily leaning, although I'm curious to see if more is going to be addressed about the significance of records, because uh, Frankie does not surprise us. He gives us numbers, he gives us stats, he gives us um, records Mm -hmm. that were set. Mm -hmm. So, um, I can only go off of what is said, not necessarily what I think. So I'm curious if uh, I'm curious how much of that is going to be significant when we come down to it in our final arguments. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And what is something that they have to really sell you on for the closing statement in particular? I think that the faction system is important. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I, uh, I I'm in a faction, so I definitely have to say it's important. <laughs> but um, I think that I would also like to know, mutually exclusive of what they did for their faction, what they did as an individual competitor, just separate from that, what makes them the player of the year? So I'd like to hear a little more about that versus just what they did for their faction. Absolutely. Um, Something I would really love to see discussed that wasn't really touched on all that much um, until the very last little bit there is that I would love to see the evolution of how the competitor really came to be this season. Obviously, these two are very, very different. We have a Cinderella story versus a huge comeback story. So I would love to see that's really kind of be tied in a little bit into the closing statements. Our ghost judge, um, you know, really also wants to mention that we are talking about the, the player of the year, not teammate of the year. So he wants, sorry, they want to know about more personal accomplishments this year, uh, comparing and contrasting as well. But team matters, yeah. team matters. You tell your ghost judge, team matters because that is all combined. Player of the year. Player of the year. Save that for the closing statement. Okay. Tell the ghost judge okay. what's up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can tell them what's what. You know, or towards the very end. <laughs> All right, but we're gonna be since we started this question with Frank, uh, we're gonna also gonna be ending it with him as well for this closing statement. Are you ready? Uh, yes, 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 I am. All right. All right. Well, you have one minute on the clock to really sell us on Adam Collins starting now. That's the entire year. Adam Collins missed eight questions in his, in his entire rookie year this year or last year, 2020. He won the singles title off of arguably the greatest player of all time, Dan Merrill at Spectacular in sudden death where anything can happen, but he pulled ahead. He won the horror free for all. He entered in that second round, lasted past everybody, including Jeff Snyder. He was there before Jeff Snyder, was there after Jeff Snyder, and he won that horror free-for-all. He he accumulated for 42% of his faction's points compared to Snyder's 40%. Almost the same, but guess what? 42 is better than 40. And 71 points for corruption is the reason why 
Adam Collins and Corruption are at the top of the rankings and they have that trophy. So with all the records Adam Collins has set this year for a, a okay. single season, uh, what he meant to his faction in terms of pre- preparation and lifting that faction up to feel like they have a shot at the title, it was all because of Adam Collins. And time. Ooh. Yeah. What I'm hearing is that Adam Collins is the reason why corruption could be faction of the is fraction of the year. That's a solid, solid argument. All right. Um, and John, over to you. You also have one minute to really wrap it up with a nice bow to really sell us on Snyder being player of the year. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh let me know when oh, starting. Starting now. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Jeff Snyder, what can you say? How many years has he been in the league? And he came back this year in such a powerful fashion. 12 matches, 12 matches beating some of the greats on both sides of the bracket, teams and singles. And yes, teams matters. What you do in teams to carry your uh, uh, the team across the finish line to win a belt, that matters. What you do on singles matters. Oh, and let me throw something else into the mix. Character matters. The character you create matters. Player of the year is not just analytics and statistics. Those are nice for the kids in the MIT. But those are the people who watch this show. They understand what they love about it are victories. They don't care how they come. Belts, they don't care how they come. And character work. And nobody did better this year than Jeff Snyder in all three of those categories as a player of the year. 42%, 10%, 1%. I could give a shit. What matters is, did you show up when you needed to show up? And he did. And did you bring a great character work to make the fans interested? He did that and more than time. Can you say 30 seconds? And time. Oh, no. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, sir. It has to be during when you're talking. Oh, okay. During the round. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you can definitely use it, um, like we can mention it during your closing statements as well. Uh, but unfortunately, once it's been wrapped up, gotcha, that's gotcha. the end of the argument. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I didn't clarify. All right. Oh, guys, you heard it here. That wraps up our first debate. So we're going to go ahead and wait a few minutes while we get our final answers from both our judges, Mara, as well as our ghost judge. So we're going to play the waiting game until we find out who. All right. Um, over, uh, so I do kind of want to know from you guys, Adam and Snyder. These are both obviously like really amazing competitors. Who would throw the best Schmodown after party? I think uh, Snyder. 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 I mean, <laughs> they're like, it's like your response are like obvious. How <laughs> is like Art Star from Silicon Valley? He's essentially carried that stole his character from him. So they're not, not going to get a lot out of that. I mean, I think Collins can put a good drink together. I think he can put a good drink together, but mm-hmm. uh, he's a whiskey man. Snyder. He, he can make my drink. Snyder, I'm going to have fun with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, oh, why is that? What do you think that his uh, you know, Schmodown after party would, why do you think it would be amazing? Specifically, you, you know, other his than you entrances? Know, like, like you see how he dresses <laughs> up, how you know he gets the crowd going, the glasses, yeah, right. yeah, mm-hmm. and that's, that's my it. point. That's yeah. why the character work matters. Andrew, I mean, matters. that's also why they have really heel matters. of the year and baby face of the year awards. Not mm-hmm. those are character awards, that's no, all part of it. It's all part yeah, of it, yeah, it's all sliced off of it. You know, if you just sit there with a nice, mm-hmm. I hope just never nice wins one of those, awards, hairs, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I have to say. You know, me being me, I, I definitely want to be a contrarian, honestly, and say Adam Collins, just because, you know, I because it's me. It's who I am. I mean, Roka, you and I, like, fight all the time, obviously. And, you know, I just am like, well, he says this one. I got to go in this direction, whether I like or not. Um, but Adam, he's just, like, so chill. And I think it's always the quiet ones that, like, low-key are they rage the hardest let's be honest sure. they're also serial killers so don't uh, <laughs> don't don't uh, factor that, so. that's true um mara what did you think about the arguments from both frank and john and their closing statements without giving us uh without giving us who you voted for per se i think that there were two very different strategies employed and as a debater there's always something to be said for having the very last last word and I think mm-hmm. that it was wise of John to bring up something that couldn't be refuted because he had the last word. However, I really appreciated and I like the strong foundation and kind of weaving in 
connecting his opening argument to his closing argument mm -hmm. that Frank did. That's another very good tactic. So uh, mm -hmm. we have some people that may be untrained, but are strong with the force, stronger than they know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What I'm hearing is that both of these uh, competitors have some uh, Matichlorians, you know, a little bit, maybe one at a higher level than the other, which one we're going to find out. Um, okay, so it does look like we have our winner of the first debate, the question being who should win player of the year. The winner of the first question is John Rocha. What? No. <laughs> I beat Frank Harris. Yeah, we can change our minds. Oh. No, no, I appreciate it. It's very kind. <laughs> wow. Um, well, yeah. Frank okay. All studying. I'm surprised. Okay. <laughs> um, Mara, uh, what was like a, the one of the real big key points that really leaned you in uh, towards Roca versus Frank tonight? On this question Bringing in the aspect of those intangibles um like the mm -hmm. character work aspect was very powerful for me because uh if you'll notice i i take really detailed notes <laughs> no no Incredible. and uh and i i think that there it was pretty evenly matched if i had to be honest i it came mm -hmm. down to the closing argument because i could have easily been swayed one way or the other because there were two different tactics there were um straight up numbers and numbers mm -hmm. Are, are the most important thing versus there are other things that are important. And so specifically having that last point about character work that could not be argued against in any way, that was just kind of that last little bit that absolutely tipped me in one direction. Cause if not, it would have been a toss up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also do want to point out that both of these competitors are absolutely amazing and both of them absolutely deserve it. Um, but one was apparently argued just a little bit, Better. All right. And I just want to reaffirm to everyone in the chat, we are not going to bring in our personal biases into this. They are going to argue exclusively from these arguments from Frank and John as well. So we can't put in our personal extra, you know, bits and pieces of information into it. So with that being said, we are going to move on to our second question. And which is we're going to find out who the ghost judge is at the end of the show. Oh, we are. No, we no, are. No. Don't oh, okay. you worry. We will. <laughs> All right. Um, which is, oh, you know what? Let me just like stop that from scrolling it's real an quick. Actual ghost. It's an <laughs> that actual. might be a little bit difficult for our Mara to read. Um, Mara, would you do the honor in reading our second question? I shall. Our second question is, who should win Comeback Player of the Year? Mm. Mm. Comeback competitor of the year. And there's so many to choose from, um, ranging from Ace Cabrera to Perry Nemiroff. Um, so there's so many to choose from that were, uh, you know, for this year. All right. So last time we started with Frank, this time we're going to go with John uh, for your opening statement. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. And how long do I have this one? One minute, right? You have one minute. Yes. Uh, All right. One All minute right. starting now. All right. Well, you talk about comeback player of the year. A lot of people think, well, because they had a terrible year last year, they, they, they came back and they really brought it this year. Well, I'll tell you, there's a player who hadn't played for years, then got absolutely molly whopped in his first game of last year because uh, we're dealing with 2020. And he picked himself back off the canvas got together with his manager, studied harder, relaxed into the game, and he absolutely shocked the world with his performance in the Star Wars tournament, which is why Ace Cabrera is times. my comeback player of the year. Ace has been incredible, stepping in against the heavyweights in the Star Wars division, Ken Knapsack, Laura Kelly, and my own faction mate, Andrew DiMolanta, for now, and then rolled <laughs> up into the final against Alec Damon. And yeah, maybe not the best performance overall because he didn't get that belt, but what he was able to do to come back from a loss in the same year and shock the world is an incredible and time that wraps it up for John for the opening statements, picking um, Ace Cabrera. Woo, I love it. Okay. And we are going to be going over to Frank for your opening statement for question number two. Are you ready? I am. All right. You have woman on the clock starting now. You're not going to believe this, but I picked Jeff Snyder for comeback player of the year. And it's for really a lot of your folks. It's really for a lot of the reasons John said in the opening uh, question, you know, he won two tournaments this year. He didn't win any tournaments last year. If I recall, no, he did not. Uh, he improved his gameplay from last year to this year tremendously in singles and in teams. Uh, he's up for a whole slew of awards this year, maybe a few just last year. 
I think what Snyder meant to the rock stars uh, as a whole mm -hmm. cannot be um, stated enough, and that contributes to what Andrew was able to do. So while he was also a comeback player of the year, he also helped elevate uh, that squad as well, uh, something that, uh, you know, was, it's is needed when, when you're in a tough spot as a faction. So Jeff Snyder is comeback player of the year for really everything John just said uh, a question ago. <laughs> <laughs> and time. Mm. Again, I have argued on both sides of this multiple times, like on several C2A shows, on a handful of other shows. So I'm glad I'm not in your shoes, Mara. So what are you excited to hear being talked about in the open debates? I will count each round individually. So I'm very <laughs> excited to hear John tear down why Jeff Snyder is <laughs> not the comeback player of the year. Oh, I got that yeah. ready. Don't worry. I got that ready. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to get interesting. And over to the chat real quickly, you know, just real fast, diving into it. How has a, how has a cookie crumbled? Yes. Um, um, one, two, three, Narnia has mentioned. He won a belt, Snyder, last year, team's belt. Woo. Um, to, um, um, and let's see. Snyder came back with multiple matches. And, you know, NC Shepard brought up, you know, I agreed with uh, Frank on both points. I say that as somebody whose favorite player is Roka, he's off the mark. Mm. Yes. But I'm also, uh, there's... There's not a there's not any love for Lawn. I would also put Lawn on that for com comeback competitor of the year. So mm -hmm. he All got right. knocked up by Adam yeah. Collins, so that's tough. So <laughs> true. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have four minutes on the clock to really impress us with your uh, comeback knowledge. Four minutes starting right now. Here's some more numbers, John and uh, Adam Collins. He was the last question. Jeff Snyder, this question. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jeff Snyder try to, try to stay focused, improved. Right? Yeah. Jeff Snyder improved his accuracy rate in singles by 23% this year. This year. And then in teams, he improved his accuracy rate by 15% this year. When you look at Ace, you know, you talk about how he played in Inner Geekdom, then he comes back to play in Star Wars. Well, he didn't come back to play in Inner Geekdom. So he, he didn't come back. He just started in Star Wars. So he didn't come back from anything. He just started, John. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Star Wars is part of the inner geekdom question you're going to get asked. And when Robert Parker comes out and hands you your ass, it's not an easy thing to get up off the canvas and fight. And Ace Cabrera showed you. Jeff Snyder had relatively the same record this year that he had in 2019 and 2018. So there wasn't really much to come back from. Jeff has always been an, a good play, good to excellent player. He just happened to go that little bit extra more this year and get the belt. And all kudos to him. But he's a veteran of the game. And so his records are relatively the same give or take a win or a loss here and there from 2018 2019 2020 so what are you coming back from if you're essentially he had he lost the belt he had to come back to get coming, the belt was coming he had to come back, back to get the belt john <laughs> and then lost again earlier this year and ace really showed you what can happen in a given year if you just settle in study trust your manager understand the game and keep your nerves tight and smart and win all the way through and win a tournament and shock the world that's coming back you i mean back ace never played in ace star wars Jeff's before this year all the time Jeff's he never played but star wars before at all this year so it's not like he's coming back from uh, an 0 2 record in star wars to win the tournament that's not what happened he again he just started this year in star wars yeah Jeff but, snyder has been playing in singles and teams his entire career in the showdown and has trying. elevated his play from last year to this year the, to be comeback player yeah, of the year much, to win the not teams not tournament much. singles finals tournament argument, though to fix, focus on one thing and the thing is it doesn't matter if ace carrera has played in some uh, in some other division what matters is the fact that he took two tough losses nobody expected any Anything from this kid coming in and then when he got butt whipped he ever thought well no way and he came back within the same year and shocked the world jeff snyder had a tough loss to ethan Irwin earlier this year so he, he wants to talk about matches in this year i'll point to that one for jeff snyder before. and he then he comes Darby back before. to beat ethan Irwin in the tournament Absolutely. and to get to the singles final tournament so if he, you want to talk about comebacks within the year yeah, jeff looked, snyder certainly has done that absolutely but not to the point that ace did where everyone counted jeff out everyone counted ace out in that first round and he shocked the world kept going all the way to the final of the tournament and then won the tournament against i don't know i think people are also favoring over snyder 
as a guy who loves numbers, he missed what? A total of three questions the entire tournament? That's an incredible thing One to minute. come back from. And that's what he was able to do. And other divisions, having played or not played them, that's irrelevant. It's that people, nobody expected him to win. And he stepped up and he beat them, went totally. So that's, that's a surprise, not a comeback. That's that a surprise. A no, no. What Jeff Snyder did was a surprise. He actually won, a, won that belt. But he came back from his previous play of last year and improved to this year. It's the same level of play. He's eight. He's what, It's not the same six, level, John. Seven and six to seven and five is not that much of a Those, difference. The oh, level one, of play four is, is much is more elevated this year or past year. Where, where you, you, come back. <laughs> you know, Jeff, Jeff essentially plays uh, 500 ball almost every year, just above 500 ball every year. Whereas Ace Cabrera was literally zero, zero, zero winning percentage. And this year won four matches to one. Great. Line. He's Star Wars player of the year. Doesn't that, make him comeback player of the year. That is coming back from zero to <laughs> victories. is a Zero. What? The Zero Aaron Collins is comeback player of the year because he never played in singles. We're not talking about Collins, you lost the <laughs> already. Zero wins. Zero wins to four wins. Okay, That's John. Comeback. I'm telling All you. All right. Man, time. <laughs> that wraps up our open to think for a second question, and things are definitely not super heated right now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to do some like maybe some like yoga, some relaxation, breathing. <laughs> this is a Tuesday night for me. This is not a Wednesday night for me. Like some Zen music or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is great. I love it. Because I can see steam coming from both y'all's covered ears right now. My <laughs> headphones like were like dying and they were like their battery is horrible dying. So forgive me on that. But yeah, so you guys are definitely heated on both of these picks because both of them are fantastic picks and then both of them deserve it in my opinion. Um real quickly I do want to there I, I do kind of want to focus specifically on again uh how the characters are kind of tied into them because I didn't really hear anything about Ace, his um, his character. Again, he's very much a Cinderella story. People didn't really know what to expect him going into Star Wars division, only playing a few matches in IG prior, not very well. But um, also in Snyder, let's face it, you know, he's always been great. Um, but, you know, at the same time, he had a huge, you know, motivation to prove himself this season. So I'm excited to kind of see more on that. Our ghost judge um, likes, um, liked both um, arguments as well. They also want you to elaborate on how a competitor can be, can be a player of the year, but not comeback player of the year. That said, I'll try not to think of the first round heavily. Obviously, we're not going to bring in those biases, of course. <laughs> um, Mara, what is something that, are there any questions that you would love to see answered in this closing round? Closing statements, please? <laughs> I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to know one thing that, I mean, I like the idea that we have ambiguities and that everyone kind of puts their own spin on it. Mm -hmm. I would just really briefly, without taking up too much of your time when you're, when you're speaking, what is it, a, like, what are you calling a comeback? Because mm -hmm. it is a somewhat subjective term. So sure. mm -hmm. I want to hear what you guys are defining as the comeback. So that way mm -hmm. I can decide which of these two metrics is what is going to sway me. All I'm hearing when you say that is um, essentially I'm hearing John say, don't call it a comeback. Pew! Yeah, one of them is definitely much more of a traditional comeback situation. And the other one isn't um, is definitely much more of a, I guess, more of a subtle approach to a comeback for sure. Um, Okay, well, you guys do have closing statements to make. Um, we started with John. We're going to be ending with this question with John as well. Are you ready to make your closing statement? Uh, yes. Yes, I you want am. Want to give you a deep breath first? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to make sure where I was at uh, uh, time-wise with everything and, and mm -hmm. making sure we have enough uh, uh, information to deliver the arguments that people need to hear from me as the outlaw. Well, Okay. My, I know my personal definition of a comeback in particular is just a competitor not being as great from last season, right? And doing redeeming themselves um, in some fashion this season, yeah. whether it be small, large, regardless of how it is. I it is a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, you have one minute on the clock, starting right now. 
Let's do it. All right. So when you talk about comeback player, you talk about comeback, right? That means coming back from someplace down in the valley. I have been there myself as the outlaw, marched my way back to a title, marched my way back to prominence. I know what it's like to come back, right? Seven and five, or eight, seven and five to eight and four is not a comeback. Playing the same character one year, the same character next year, that's not a comeback. I'll tell you what's a comeback. Coming from two losses, one in the current year, that and nobody, nobody expecting anything from you. Everybody coming after you. Everybody discounting you, and you showing up to play in the games you are assigned to play, and shocking the world with your performance. Knowing the actual parking citation, knowing number, all of that. It's an incredible amount of attention to detail, uh, incredible amount of nerve. Also creating a character, creating a way to play, working well with your manager, and entertaining the audience. All of it from zero to hero an incredible dub that ace cabrera did in 2000 and time Ooh. who puts the glad and gladiator ace cabrera <laughs> okay and we are going to be going over to frank frank and numbers himself are you ready for your closing statement as well uh yeah yeah all right one minute on the clock starting now so Jeff Snyder as comeback player of the year has come back from tough losses. Uh, he had a tough title match loss against Paul Lama, Paul Yami last year or the year before it rather. Uh, it was one of the most least accurate title matches of all time in the history of singles title matches to play uh, a great singles campaign in which again he improved his accuracy rate by 23 percent where he did fall victim to adam collins in the tournament final which was the largest tournament field we've ever seen but Jeff Snyder made it to the end. With Jeff Snyder for teams, he lost the belt, won the belt back. He lost it, then won it in an epic match, in an epic fashion, and an epic team's tournament run. So with all that being said, if you start from year prior in a division in which you competed, improve your play to the next year, that's a comeback. If you've never played in that division before, to play in that division now, that's just starting. That's a starting point. You started... And you come back from time. Well, you guys don't need to take a breather, but I'm going to take a breather. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Now we are going to play the waiting game again for both Mara as well as our ghost judge. And then in the meantime, I'm going to give you a few hints by who our ghost judge is. So you guys can take a gander who it is over in the chat i would love to guys participate and guess who our guest is our ghost judges and i will give you two hints one a male oh. sadly there's not that very, very many um uh females in schmo down but it's a whole other conversation two they are a draft rookie Yes, they are a draft rookie, and Frankie, I'm sure, knows every single one of them because we've seen that little circle, that little chart with all their competitors that he's familiar with. But also, they are a competitor that uh, apparently both of you guys have to uh, have chat with, and he wants to play in singles and teams. Yeah. So you guys can take hmm. some guesses if should you like. It's actually my cat. <laughs> Is it Brother Loomis? Mm, is it mm, who? It's someone that I've talked to. Talk to or at? That kind of narrows. Yeah, it that's down. A, that's an interesting. Oh, yeah, that's another. Oh, yeah. yeah, I I didn't realize. <laughs> I love that you both thought the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it does make the thing. I've only talked to a few rookies so far this year, so but there has been a few in my mentions. I'll tell you that. Um, who could, I don't I don't know. Well, um, in that case, while well, you guys are trying to, to figure out who it would be, I mean, like, well, in that case, who are some rookies? Do you think um, maybe not so much that could be a ghost judge, but who are some like really great rookies that you guys have? Um, you guys, I think, are pretty great then. In that case. <laughs> No. Yeah, in terms, in terms of like like characters, for sure that that mm -hmm. that Rick Radis guy, Brother Lomas, you know, certainly stand out as characters. Um, I think when you look at like just pure knowledge, you you have to look at those Dragon Con players with uh, Harper and then um, Marie. You know, those players who've faced Alex before in other areas of Star Wars. Um, 
those are certainly players to look out for. Um, other rookies. Oh, Amaru Moses is a guy I keep seeing his name around a lot uh, mm -hmm. for Inner Geekdom. Yeah. Oof, who else? I mean, there, there's a lot out there. There's yeah. There's like 60-something rookies this year. That's yeah. crazy. It's bonkers. It's so yeah. bonkers. It hurts my heart knowing that so many of these really great rookies, um, potential rookies, are obviously so talented, but obviously there's just so few spots available. So they're going to, to make it uh, – it's definitely going to get hyper, hyper competitive for sure. Ron, uh, John, do you have any – Theories? Craig's handling all our rookies. Craig's been interviewing all our rookies and compiling a dossier at all the rookies. So he knows I've been around the league long enough to rookies are nice. Show me what you can do in the ring. So until mm -hmm. I see what you can do in the ring, I'm not really watching out for you. But character work, certainly Brother Loomis elevates to the top. Rick Raddus elevates to the top. Uh, uh, I heard Peggy. Peggy is also an interesting mm -hmm. uh, uh, person mm -hmm. as well. And then um, uh, the gentleman who played at Dragon Con and beat uh beat alex damon i know he is in the mix and he's someone that we've looked at and talked with as well so for me craig is handling the rookies so i only know so much at this point but if craig says they're good then i can't wait to get them on the finstock exchange and train them mm -hmm. up and get them belts around their waists around I, their shoulders i got some flag for not including a name on, on my on my rookie list uh jacoby oh, bancroft was someone that uh, people uh, adamantly and uh, feverishly pointed out to me should have been on the list, and uh, well, you him. didn't you? Um, no, uh, um, didn't you just, uh, have him on your list when the the draft list went in December? No. Yeah. No. Did, no, oh, okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm hearing good things about Peggy. Gun. Yeah. I'm just hearing I, a lot of people say she knows a lot about a lot, and so I'm. I'm, I'm I wonder. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she's ready to be a heel. I wonder if we take her into the Finstock Exchange if she's ready to be a part of what we're trying to do. We shall see. But uh, I'm excited. I, I can 100 percent see her, and she's immensely talented. Yeah. And yeah. so. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This draft is going to be so much fun. It's going to be nice to sit back and not be a fourth round pick. It's going to be nice to decide where we go. And already there are a lot of factions. I've heard all this all this chatter. They're lining up against us. They're trying to steal players mm -hmm. from us. I see it all happening like mm -hmm. it's supposed to happen. But the worst thing you can do is piss me the fuck off because <laughs> then I'm coming for your asses, all of you in 2021. So do all your little snickering and smiling and and, and backstage, uh, all that stuff that you want to do. But don't ever count me out when I'm motivated to destroy. And so I can't wait for this season to start. I can't wait for Craig, the Barbarian, and Finstock, all of us to mm -hmm. reclaim what was what was ours and that we lost in 2020 to come back and show people. So, you know, whatever happens at the end of the day, I'm going to be confident we're going to put together an incredible team that's going to shock the world. And the last thing you want is the outlaw as an underdog. It's the last thing you want. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be definitely a brand new year with so many changes. I'm so excited. I'm so nervous. <laughs> so uh, to put it mildly, but you know, now we're just going to play the waiting game and hope uh, some of these amazing people get drafted and uh, take it from there. All right. We have our votes from both our, from both of our judges, but we're not going to tell you who won that debate. So we're going to move on to our third and final debate. Again, uh, uh, the winner of these debates has to win two out of the three debates. So we're going to see how it goes for the third and final one. Like I said, we're going to be using a coin. Unfortunately, I do not have my action coin. I moved and I don't know where it is. So oh no. I, uh, I I don't know. I'm sorry. Or I have a coin. Is it oh, you're just bringing the ghost judge to <laughs> We're just going to use a quarter in the meantime. Oh, okay. And um, we're not going to use my official action army, our Lord and Savior Andrew Guy coin. So <laughs> until, <laughs> until I find it again, How I can't buy our Lord and Savior Andrew Guy <sighs> wherever he is. <laughs> um, but John chose heads going into it, and also Frankie. Obviously, it goes with tails. So we're going to find out who is going to go. Ah. I guess I have to erase all this now, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it landed on heads. Oh. It landed on heads. Oh. All right. So, Roka, it did land on your side. So would you like to go first or second for no, the third? I will, I will defer to Frank. Uh, Frankie Numbers. Want to defer? All right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the final question. Mara, could you please do the honor? I shall. Our final question. 
I love this one. What new category should be added to the Schmodown Awards? There's already like 50 million of them. <laughs> there also should be more. The in my opinion, there's always should be more. More of this, less of that, all that good stuff. All right. So, okay. All right. Defer over to Frank. So, what did you pick? So, you have one category. on the top. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I do want to I do remind you guys, you guys do have the 30 second extension time to use or not use at your leisure. But you have one minute on the clock starting now. So I would like to see uh, a new award for next year, the best Schmodown scene. So the Schmodown uh, is become quite famous for its scenes uh, post match or, or pre match. And this could be more of a type of an ensemble type of award, similar in the way that match of the year could be seen in that same type of fashion, where whether it's a team match or just a regular singles match or intergeekdom match, Star Wars, what have you. Uh, I would really like to see this become a, an award because I think there's a lot of talent uh, within the Schmodown roster that when they're on screen together in these scenes uh, playing off one another, I think we get some very memorable moments, some memorable quotes. Um, you know, Justin Square always in the in the in the Facebook group with these quote um, polls. So I think um, giving attention to these scenes where people are players are acting and having fun and to award a particular scene at the end of the year for their work, I think would be um, a great way um, to honor that. And time bringing in uh, like an ensemble situation. I'm into that. All right. Best schmodown scene. Okay. Yeah, scene, cutscene. It's not a promo. I was seeing it there in the chat. No. Scene or cutscene? Which one? Like well, it's like a, well, you got to make a decision. Scene or cutscene? What's different the difference things. to you, John? Because one's gets, one gets on camera as part of the storyline and one is cut for fun. It's called, I don't know if you heard of these things, they're called deleted scenes, Frank, and they're not actually part of the overall movie. They're a separate thing you can If choose. you watch a Schmodown match and, and there are scenes outside of the match, okay, let's, that's let's what I'm talking about. Let's hold the phone right, here. We're we gonna I like that. We're we're gonna gonna yeah. I just want to clarify what argument I'm going against. So I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. I appreciate that's it. Cool. That's what I was but we can, we can see that for our open debates here in just a few moments. But John, you also have one minute on the clock to tell us what Schmodown Award should be added to the Schmodown Awards next well, year. As I just gave you a little preview of a few seconds ago, promo of the year. That's absolutely something that needs to be added here in the Schmodown Awards. Best promo of the year. My brother Dan Murrow cut an incredible promo this morning on SEN Live on Jeff Snyder. That carries weight. Promos show you where you're at in the match or where you're at in the game. Collins put me to sleep with all his promos, but Dan Merle has been incredible. And what's a way to get noticed? Promos. What are people doing right now? They're not cutting cut scenes or putting up scenes or anything like that. They're cutting promos to show you how good of a player they can be as rookies to get drafted by factions. It's promos that make you a star. Play makes you great and respected. Promos make you a star that's what makes you stand out scenes are nice those are scripted promos most of the time improv showing who you are as a talent and what you can bring to the game and why people should follow you buy your merchandise and look forward to your play as a player and i think that makes the difference between pro between scenes and a promo and time right on the money promo of the year versus schmodown scene of the year. So I'm kind of curious to see uh, them dive into the differences between that. Mara, you know, obviously John kind of name dropped your man candy earlier. Just <laughs> ago. Well, only because it worked out. Only because it worked out. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, you know, okay. So, you know, being obviously being from the outside from this year up until the very, very end spoilers. Um, what do you think about some of these options? Do you think they're they're too similar? Do you think they're totally obvious? What do you think of the picks? I would like to thank both of you for making this as difficult as possible. <laughs> around. So, um, yeah, next time I bake something, just you might want to think about whether or not there's X lax in it. So, um, <laughs> okay. I think, uh, truly, though, uh, I, I think that this is going to be very fun because I like mm -hmm. that this could have gone anywhere in any possible direction. And I like that people actually took it seriously because I could have easily done with a joke answer and a serious answer and just seen that interplay. But um, both people coming out uh, guns blazing. I'm really curious to see who's going to end up with the haymaker at the end uh, and who's going to make contact because this is going to be really the probably the most difficult one so far because it's so 
it's nebulous and it, it doesn't exist. So we're all just imagining all these things. We don't, we don't have any numbers. So <laughs> I'm really excited to see what happens. And also, how can Nerd Chronic win every single one of them? That's what I want to know. <laughs> he have his own MVP. Why doesn't he just win every single award, honestly? Even though he doesn't compete, just give him all the awards. Um, our ghost judge would also like to know, uh, they would also want to hear why a scene is more or less significant than a promo and vice versa. You know, that distinguishes between the two and why it's one more worthy of an award. Mm -hmm. So great, great point by our ghost judge. But you guys heard it. We're going to be going into our open debate. You guys have four minutes to get going. You have four minutes starting right now. The idea that a promo makes a star is contingent upon the fact that the player actually win matches in order to continue to cut promos. Josh McCoon cut promos all the time, and he's with just scenes, barely wins matches. Yep. With scenes, it, it, opens, it opens the field to just about everybody involved in the Schmodown, whether you're a manager or assistant manager, a player that doesn't get a lot of play, but can be seen uh, uh, with regularity with, with the scenes that the Schmodown does for pre-match and post-match cuts cut scenes. Right. So with that, you, you allow the opportunity for these other players who may not get as many matches as one would like, give them an opportunity to be visible, to show what, what, what their talent is, and how they vibe with other players or competitors in the league. That's why I you're think reaching. This you're scene. absolutely reaching, and you know it. I can tell by the way you're stumbling. Scenes are great, and they're fun for introducing players to fans who might not get to it, but about to get a following to get fans to follow you to watch your matches to be invested in your matches promos trust me as the promo king that's how it that's works. why you I picked it because that's like the one thing you're really good at but, uh, oh oh winning belts ain't another thing i'm really good at. i said one you of the things better, you're good at you know one of good at? hosting a goddamn show listen to the situation here <laughs> when you look at this promos are what makes the difference right everyone's been everyone loved dan merle dan merle, but it wasn't until he started really stepping into the promos it added a next level as if dan merle the goat could go next level he did his promo work over the last two years has been something to talk about what Look, you just today kaiser and brandon hannah put a cut scene and cut scene Guy, it's in the facebook group people wanted to, his to see as an ongoing made series his name on promos andrew guy who was terrible in teams and singles made his name on promos and then got better as a player but he was someone everybody was in love with from the, the beginning because of his promos not any of his the scenes. promos are so contingent no, on you no, winning to continue to no, cut promos you can do a great promo when you lose i mm -hmm. did that after i lost to corruption the first time cut me an awesome promo that people still well, think why would they follow you if you're not going to win to no, go along with your promo it all know. becomes as hot air at the end of the day you talk a lot of smack but can't back it up when you lose a match with a scene show you who you really are and who you really are as a person your real stuff comes up mike kalinowski crying in the middle of promos that made the fans love him even more and endear themselves to him that makes the difference him doing a scene is fun and they like him but it wasn't until he showed his heart promo show you who you are as a person your heart how, you, how you're made up as a person scripted lines don't always do that promo okay well let's do. let's say That's scripted <laughs> let's not act like they, they have, a, they have, have a script yes i have they're yeah. feeding you lines and giving you line readings promos he just goes here's what you need to hit go get them and that's what's great to watch and you see the ones that really take to it and the stars no one goes you know what i'm we're gonna follow this guy a girl or girl because he's really good in the scene they go oh my god did you see what they just said did you see the two minutes they just delivered that was incredible and that's always the difference to me between a star and a player a good player the stars are the ones who can cut promos, win or lose, and make people invested in their journey, and that matters in this uh, in this league. I think with the with the scenes though is that you get a collaboration, and when you get those creative juices flowing between one, two, three, four four players in a scene, I think by rewarding something like that at the end of the year for the work that you do, because people do take the scene seriously. They want to come off well. They want to, they don't want to look like, you know, that they don't know what they're doing. They're not talented. Sure. They put a lot of work into that. And really, I mean, look at Ben Bateman and Andrew Guy. Ben Bateman took a hit from Andrew Guy into a table. That's not a promo. That's a that's a cut scene. Yeah, but that's memorable. everyone's, and that's a legendary yeah, cut scene. Just for being attacked. Yeah, not for your that it up. Hey, oh, mm, strike that last statement from the record, Miss Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Um, <work. laughs> I'd like to strike a lot of things right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
there is like a lot that was that was a lot um especially coming as a fan it's very i there, i was very hard not to be biased going into this and that makes me so so grateful that i'm not a judge that's mara's job so speaking of which what did you think of some of these arguments well, I, I got to say, again, it's it's one of those things where uh, y- you have to see, is the winning and the losing that significant? Is the exposure that significant? Mm-hmm. Is scripted versus non-scripted that significant? So it's, you know, we have a lot of back and forth on all three of these things. So just kind of seeing where we, we can end up, because again, it's it's really going to come down to uh, the, this this final argument. I'm not giving anything away because they're, they're, I just have sc- writing all the right. <laughs> Can we see examples of your notes so far? Um, sure. It's, it's really illegible because I have to write with my right hand with a whiteboard because if not, I just smear all of the uh, the writing away with my left hand because I'm I'm ambidextrous. So uh, you, I look like two different people though. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> they're totally different, but they're both terrible. Terrible I'm so jealous. I am so, apparently I am ambidextrous, but I never really actively tried. Like I can write a little bit with my right hand, but I mean, like it's just like so ugly. I'm like I don't want to look at this. But regardless, um, yeah. So there's a lot specifically. Um, Mara, is there any one point in particular, looking through your notes, that really stood out to you? I think the idea of one thing that stood out to me that I'd like to hear more about uh, is the idea that it was it was said obliquely, so I'm I'm gleaning just a little bit, even though I'm making sure I mm-hmm. only write down words that they actually say. But um, Frank mentioned the the concept that best scene could be an award that perhaps could recognize someone who is a valuable contribution to the schmodown, but that doesn't necessarily like win a title because I think that. That, that's definitely something that's important, though there was a lot more I could say that I think or feel about that. That's what was said. So I'd like to know, you know, it's, it's again, it's, is the winning and the losing, like, is the winning and the furthering that story more important or is being able to recognize someone for an accomplishment outside of a record what's important? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I think there is something to be said for the emotional impact of both of these, you know, categories, promos and versus, uh, you know, Schmodown scenes. I have to say, um, when I think about my favorite Schmodown matches, I don't think of the matches specifically. I actually think about the promos that led to those matches. And I think about those cutscenes that led to those matches in particular. I remember crying. It was like it was a nerd chronic promo that made my husband a Schmodown fan where he was like, oh, where he was like dismissive of Schmodown before, and then suddenly he saw a promo that Chronic made about Smets and Mike Kalinowski, and he's like, "Oh, what's this?" And I started bawling my eyes up because obviously, and and he's like, "Oh, okay, that looks cool. We should go see it. Go in New York." And so, and now we have it. It's a, like we're a Schmodown couple. It's crazy. Now, um, I do kind of want you guys to mention specifically in the closing statements is that who do you think from this season? If they were, um, if they were awards in this year's award award show, who would win or who would be nominated to win in those categories that you would suggest? Now, I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to kind of think on it because there's obviously there's a lot to kind of dive into. But who do you guys think would win promo and promo of the year? Who would be make it? Who would be involved? And also, what what would be the best scene of the year as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, our ghost judge has mentioned that both of you guys have made really good uh, points for promos and cunt scenes that, you know, it's really made to build momentum regardless of the wins and losses. If a promo can elevate a player, what does a scene contribute to a competitor that makes it worthy of an award? So good point. Good point. Mm-hmm. All right. You guys do have one minute of closing statements. And I just want to remind you of the time extension that you can or can uh, that you can use if you like. Uh, we're going to be starting with Frankie. Are you ready? Absolutely. All right. You have one minute starting now. Again, here's why I think is uh, rewarding a scene is so important is because it creates some of the most memorable moments in Schmodown history that we will talk about forever. You look again, I pointed out Ben Bateman being tackled into a table. We still talk about that all the time. John Roke and Dan Merle themselves, 
in Houston, recreating that, that, that Rocky scene there. People love that scene. They still talk about that scene. You look at Mike Kalinowski and that corruption storyline. That takes place largely outside of all the matches. That, that's a huge storyline that dominated the season that people ate up and love still to this day. Kalinowski and, and Johnny LaQuasto arguing, that's, that was a highly emotional scene for a lot of people and it has a lasting impact on the league and the trajectory of where the league goes in terms of storylines and, and where you know, rivalries and whatnot. Um, I think the lasting impact scenes have is what makes uh, rewarding a scene important because we're saying this moment in time, this scene kept something that, that leaves an imprint on the showdown forever. And time, that wraps it up, leaving that imprint. There's something to be said about those great storylines in those Schmodown scenes, for sure. Oh, amazing. All right. And over to John. You also have 60 seconds on the clock to wrap it up with a nice bow and sell us on promo of the year as well. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Starting now. You know, one of the things we talk about all the time, Christian Harloff and I, is who is who is cutting the great promos? Who is really bringing it when they step forward to get the opportunity? Those are the people that he rewards with matches, win or lose. He knows that's what sells the game. So as important as it is to have the scenes to further storylines and lay the foundation for faction journeys and all of that, it's the promos that really bring people, bring new fans into the game. That's why I think it should be an award for Schmodown 2020 or Schmodown 2021 next year. I think that's important as hell. When people say, hey, let me sh if you're a new person to the Schmodown, do you show them a scene? No, you show them a promo or you show them a match. Those go hand in hand because they are essential to building up what this league is actually about, what you're going to get. The scenes supplement the promos sell. 30 seconds extra. That's the difference between the promos and the scenes. Promos put you in 30 seconds extra. I said promos put you in the mix. And that's yes, the picture. Do I not get the 30 seconds? Don't I get the 30 seconds? I said it twice in the middle of my. Yeah, twice. Did you hear me say it? Yep. I'm sorry, I totally missed it. I apologize. I was writing down notes and I missed it. No okay, and that, I will give you the 30 seconds starting now. Yep, it was, as I mentioned already, Josh McCuga, Andrew Guy, even Ben Bateman, the reason they kept getting matches is because they are their promos were great and they were uh, they were fantastic and fans wanted to watch them. The reason I became the outlaw was based on promos. Yes, the wins were nice and getting the belt was nice, but it was the promos that established yourself. When you're a young player, it's the promos that you use as the foundation to your stardom if you can get there and they show who you are as a person. And I think that's important for people to remember. And overall. time. Ooh. Okay, I just say something real quick. It's not in a, a, a rebuttal to John. It was just something I saw in the chat. Jake saying Kalinowski didn't argue with LaQuasa. It was Gertler. No, he did argue with LaQuasa. It was the cut scene uh, at the end where he's breaking away from the league. Uh, he did argue with Gertler, but he did argue with LaQuasto. That was uh, a very charged scene um, between Kalinowski and LaQuasto. Did we answer your question about who should win? Do you want us to still answer that question or no? Well, uh, you were supposed to was answer it in the closing yeah. scene. Unfortunately, we missed it. Um, but um, hot snap, Jake, you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So that was pretty intense. And that time we are going to be taking a few minutes for both Mara and our ghost judge to really kind of uh, let us know who they think uh, won this final debate. In the meantime, we're just going to hang out for a few minutes and mm, okay. And uh, I just kind of want to, I just want to get you guys to uh, hear some of uh, some of the people in the chat, some of their thoughts on some of y'all's debates. Andrew Valdez, right? Guy and moral confrontation at the live event. Ooh, that was a yep. great one. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic. Um, the you know, five horsemen revealed. I mean, that was another one. Yeah. Um, Bret oh, Hart. Are the best promo recently. Mm -hmm. Do you guys agree? Bret Hart cut the best promo recently. <laughs> no, I think he cut he got a a good cameo message for that. <laughs> And also always blame PLD. I apologize for taking <laughs> down my notes. I missed it. That was my bad. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Um by the way, I have already given my my vote, so I'm no longer able to change my mind. Um <laughs> I do wish that I would have heard that um scenes don't have to be scripted. I just went and did whatever I wanted to do, and they just had to, to like it or not like it. So <laughs> 
The one with the rain popping like the the background. You're you're a rarity, Mara. He doesn't give too much license to too many people, so you are a rarity. <laughs> I, I'm uh, I'm the right sense. kind of weird for the schmodown, I guess. <laughs> you are. We we all love you. That's for damn. Um, sure. what do you guys think of the one two three not, uh, Narnia suggestion for scene for Adam Witt and Molly Damon? Mm. Yeah, I thought I was going to mention that one. That was a great scene for sure. Um, I kicked myself in the ass for not mentioning the difference between Laura Kelly pre-promo and Laura Kelly post-promo. That was the oh difference between a star, between a, between someone who's coming in, not sure, and a star. And uh, oh. I had written that down. In my I figured opinion. everyone already knew that one because it's so memorable. So. Yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't need to mention it. Oh, sure. Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that was, that was I, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> It was really, oh my gosh, her character change. I, that's something I, um, I'm a little surprised that night uh, that um, wasn't really brought up is that the real character changes in storylines that can be introduced from editing, obviously, and those scripted storylines, because that obviously they can be brought in spontaneously in, you know, in promos, I mean, uncut promos, like in yep. pre interviews and post interviews and everything, but largely they can't, they're not supposed to be specific to certain, you know, storylines and everything, because like you said, John, uh, you know, a lot of times they're meant to engage potential new fans. And let's face it, if you're a new fan going to something with, um, with like 20 seasons worth of storyline, you're probably gonna be like, I don't know what this is. Why should I care? <laughs> It's a little, little bit different for sure. Um, Dirk Chronic wants to ask who would receive the award for best scene, the actors in it or the people who produced it. So no big deal. He just wants some compliments. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's everybody involved, wouldn't it? Because the editing is just as important as the acting, just as important as the scripting, just as important sure. as the back and forth with everybody. But the winner would be Nerd Chronic. So. Oh, sure. sure. In the end, yeah. And I mean, in the best promo. He'd win every single one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Best promo, too, I think so as well. <laughs> Unless it's a live event. Uh, yeah. Oh, live events. What were what are those? Oof. Yeah, we won't see those for some time. Okay. All right, we have a winner. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go in and take um bring up some of the questions, starting with, you know, who should win player of the year. Obviously, the first one we already mentioned it with being Jim Roca. So congratulations there. For the second question, who should win comeback competitor player of the year? The winner is Frank Janish. Oh, nice. Wow. That's... And for the third and final question that was just debated just a few seconds ago, what new category should be added to Schmodown Awards circa 2021? The winner being... Mr. John Roca, oh. meaning tonight's episode of Shmobes. Congratulations, winning two episodes tonight. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Uh, thank you, Frank. Um, I just want to thank everybody for this incredible award. No, I'm just joking. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. Uh, it was you great to... Uh... Promo for this, John? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> er, nerd, are you in here? Cut this. Uh, edit this in. No, no. Uh, this is uh, this is a lot of fun. I always love coming on here, and it was great to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Frankie, who's, who can always take it. You can always dish it out and take it, and you can't say that about a lot of people, so I was excited to be going back and forth with Frankie in here and it was an honor to do it with uh you uh alex and mara so and to the everybody watching i called action you know i thanked you all a lot last night my one year uh, uh celebration i said i would not it wouldn't still be standing the channel if it wasn't for the great efforts of the call to action army so much love to all of you out there for sure so, yeah. john you're gonna make me cry i don't like that i want to cry <laughs> um we are going to be bringing on our ghost judge so before oh. i bring this person on do you have an effect official theory on who it could be i do um, it's casey affleck <laughs> oh, God. oh my i hope gosh. not um, um, every larson introduce it. <laughs> i think uh who um i i'm gonna go a, with wait, you said a male rookie that we both have talked to is that what you said have yeah but male rookie that we have both male talked to. rookie that wants to compete potentially in teams and singles. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want just one name, just one name from both of you guys. I want a theory. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, it's Dan Merle's evil alter ego, Mandurl. 
Man. Oh no! <laughs> the darkest timeline is here. Abby, we didn't hear that, please. <laughs> Let's just cancel the rest. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Ghost Judge, but we need to get Mandarol, Mandarol in there. <laughs> no, who, no, no, that's who can come on. I mean, I'll, I'll just I'll say, right. I'll just say Jacoby Bancroft because I haven't. He was in my mentions, but I haven't. I don't know if I directly talked to him, like okay. directly, but I know he did tweet at me a couple of times. I don't know if okay. I okay. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know who else. Uh, I would I may, Nerd Chronic? Uh is he playing? Uh, is he <laughs> I mean I know last year he was supposed to play and yeah. then he became an editor. Is Nerd Chronic coming off the sidelines yeah. to play once and for all? Is Chronic officially on the draft list? I don't know. No, he's not. He's not. Like, oh, he isn't? It? Oh, okay. no, no, no. Then I'll say John Huey from uh oh. Resistance Broadcast System because John is mm -hmm. uh so he texted me yesterday and uh, and said, "Hey, I'm I'm really putting my hat in the ring or my Star Wars helmet in the ring, and I want to compete and need some advice. So uh, maybe him because I've talked to him before. I don't know if Frank has. All right, well let's find out who it is. I'm going to go ahead and bring you on, Ghost Judge. You can turn on the camera if you like. <laughs> I think it's more fun this way. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a ghost. It's... <laughs> it was me. Yeah, right. It was me the whole time. The Ranger Rick Radis is here. Let me tell you, Alex, I've never talked to Frankie or John before in my life, but there's no time like the present. It's an honor to be here. Nice to meet you, fellas. <laughs> What's All up, right. Reddit? So much How more you doing? here than I expected today. <laughs> Hi, Reddit. How is it going? Fantastic! It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to a uh, to a uh, judge amongst you. Not only am I a ghost judge myself, but I would say I am the uh, the the ghost of Schmodown's future. Gaze upon me and witness your own demise. <laughs> um, then, I'm just gonna take a drink. Oh, what I got here? And I do. I do have to ask, um, ghost judge. What do you think about some of these debates earlier today? Did you have a favorite question? Oh, the, the the last one, the last one. I thought it was really tough for me. Uh, what, mm -hmm. what what's what should get an award in the Schmodown Awards next year? You know, I tried to avoid my own bias with John Roca picking promo because I I'll be, <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe you couldn't guess this, but I'm a fan of a good promo. I like a good promo. So I tried I tried to fight my own bias on it. And Frankie Frankie, who I'm also quite partial to, put me in his top 15 rookies to watch on his list on Twitter. Thank you, Frankie. Appreciate you. Uh, I, I he was swaying me. He was swaying me, but. But John's point that promos can make make a make a competitor win or lose, and that uh, scenes are supplementary to the promos. I thought I thought that was a great strategy, and, and also using your thirty seconds at the end, just great strategy front to back. So, you know, great, well well fought, well played, John. Mm -hmm. well played. Okay, my only victory this year, so I appreciate that. And also, <laughs> if, I might, if I might, John, I loved hearing you say that the Rager elevated character work. That sounded so good. I heard you earlier saying you didn't care about the rookies, but you know who the Rager is, Daddy, and I like that. Fair, fair, absolutely. I look forward to having you in the in the showdown, man. I look forward to your matches. Happy to hear. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm a I'm a free agent, you know. I know we've got a dossier on you. Don't you sweat it. We, All we've right. got a lot of people yeah. looking at Daddy O. Yeah. Um, Mara, real quickly, um, uh, what what you what 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 what, what you think of you know working with uh, this uh, fine rookie, potentially fine rookie, you know you know working with him as a ghost judge? Was it a little nerve wracking? Was it intense? Was it terrifying? Or was it like the best judging co judging experience of your entire life? Well, I, I don't know if I can call it the very best, but. <laughs> Uh, that's only because I've had a lot of experience, so I don't want to recall how old I am and how much that experience really means to me. But you are um, a judging expert and judging champion, though. Just putting that out there. Well, we were very much aligned in our thought processes, so it was actually very mm -hmm. easy to come to a decision. Uh, Ghost Judge brought up really valid points, also had a nice conversation about some things I noticed, so it was actually very easy. Uh, we, were, we were in alignment on every single question. We were speaking to the same hive mind, Mara. We were, we were like, we were mentally and spiritually entwined. It was great. Yeah, it's like a fishtail braid, except I don't know how to do those. <laughs> I'll teach you afterwards. <laughs> coming to uh, coming to YouTube shortly. How to make a fishtail braid? It's going to be a new uh, new video on Schmodown Network YouTube channel. So uh, coming in hot, the YouTubers for sure. Okay, now I do kind of want to know specifically, Roca. You yeah. have won tonight's debate, so congratulations. But do you 
want to debate anyone in the future, really go to town. I, I know you've well, debated Bibs in the past. You've debated. <laughs> so who would you like to go against? a good question i would love to avenge my loss to bibs but i don't think i lost that debate that was more of a, a technicality um <laughs> i wonder i wonder who would be great to debate um i would imagine jeff snyder wait did i did i debate him already i think i debated him already did i uh I alex so. i think i was supposed to and then i couldn't because of time constraints. Yeah. So i would say yeah. jeff snyder or hey movie fights merle <laughs> I owe you a little whooping. So anytime you want to go toe to toe on this show with your brain and your thinking and your facts and your figures and your encyclopedia Mechanica, let's go to it. Passion versus brains. Uh, we both have a little bit of both. Let's do this. Slam into each other. I want to take on the great, the greatest of all time. Part two uh, to the greatest of all time. Part one. So I'm, I'm down to take on uh, Dan Merle uh, in a debate in a schmo baits one day toe to toe nothing's better than what we're going at each other that's for sure and, and of course relate I would word for word inflection for inflection for him john you know I, I you know what turn the computer i'm gonna yell through the computers <laughs> game in the other room he's upstairs <laughs> right now sorry john <laughs> Come on, get in there. Um, I definitely think it's very doable. I would love to see a Schmobate themed on the founding fathers, you know, history. So Ooh, best match, no best uh, best belt match, all that good stuff. So maybe in the near future, who knows? And also, Frank, <laughs> I have to let you know before John, I'm so grateful, John, you came on. Before John accepted, you know how many people I asked to debate? Yes. Uh, this many. Six? That's my Ten. Guess. Ten? Wow. People. You know why? And they, they all said this. A lot of them said the same thing. I would love to debate. That sounds amazing. However, I'm scared to debate Frankie. What? <laughs> Where I didn't say that is ridiculous. I'm scared to debate. Um, I'm scared. I've to lost debate. twice I'm already. <laughs> I know, but they, that's what they said. They were like, "I'm scared to debate Frankie." That's why he is so great with his debates. He brings all the facts. He's so hot on his numbers. He knows what he's talking about, and that's why they were like, "Yeah, we love to debate." Not Frankie. Anyone else, though? Literally anyone else. Um, so, with that being said, is there anyone you would love to debate against in the future? Yeah, any of those ten people, I guess. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh. I, I think it was my first one against Brandon Hanna. I think that one that one would be fun to to see if I could beat Hanna. Because um, I mean, I think I did that first time, but you know, people will vote the way they vote. Um, you get it. You get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because uh, it's always fun, I think. Or honestly, here's uh, Dwayne Burke. Oh yeah, oh, Dwayne fun. Burke. He's a good um, debater. Because some of the, the few times that I've been out with Dwayne, you know, out at the at the restaurant or at the bar, what what have you, mm -hmm. uh, we get into some heated heated discussions, you know, after a few drinks, and uh, it's always fun um, going toe to toe with Dwayne because he's pretty he's really good, he's really good. He actually intimidates me, but I would I would want to debate him though, nonetheless. Absolutely, Dwayne is such an amazing guy. I'm yeah. like I know he does a million things behind the scenes, getting his Twitch channel up and going, but. I, I would love to see him compete and I would love to see him debate you in particular, but guys that wraps it up on tonight's episode of Schmo Bait. So thank you so much. I do want to let you know, we are trying to do this every single Wednesday evening, roughly this time. So definitely stay tuned for that. We are also available on, um, in podcast form, anywhere podcasts are found, Apple, Spotify, all that good stuff. So definitely stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, ghost judge, <laughs> where can we find you? Well, you know, I'm a kind of a kind of a recluse. I like to stay in the shadows. They don't call me a ghost for nothing. But if you want to follow my uh, my agent or my ragent, as they say on the streets, go ahead and hit up uh, Taylor L. Cleek over on Twitter, and you'll get all the latest rage alerts. Red red alerts. Uh, you'll know where I'm going. Well, you know where I'm going. And that's to the movie trivia schmo down in 2021. But if you want all the latest details on that, go ahead and follow him on Twitter, baby. You remind me almost like a like a '90s Tom Cruise kind of. Is that before Scientology or was he still jumping on couches? Like early Scientology. Scientology. Early Scientology. I'll yeah. jump on this chair. I'll do it. <laughs> if you or if you're not jumping on the cushion, I'll be very disappointed. So get jumping, okay? <laughs> get jumping. 
jumping. Jump, jump. Oh boy, is that doesn't have wheels, does it? Is he wearing pants? Okay, thank God. I'm wearing pants. They're very short. <laughs> I love it. Katie Holmes. So <laughs> oh, what? I did wow. not expect that to happen, y'all. Um, thank you so much for coming on and check him out on Twitter. And uh, definitely stay tuned. He's, uh, I'm sure, is going to get drafted here very soon. By who? We'll find out. And John Roca, you're doing yes. a man of a million one things. Where can we find you? The outlaw, the outlaw nation, and all that good stuff. Yeah, you can always find me at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. And definitely come on over to the Outlaw Nation podcast. I'm sorry, YouTube page. I got so much going on. YouTube page. Please come over uh, youtubecom slash John Roca says. See all the great content we got going on. Just recorded the new episode of the Jedi Way. We did a live one tonight talking about Han Solo's legacy and solo a star wars story me and laura kelly uh imply truths tomorrow night our political show i uh, guess what we're going to be covering tomorrow night uh, <laughs> uh, uh darina and i it's going to be a lot of fun so come and join us for that as well and alex and i on friday morning uh with mornings with the outlaw uh, as well and then of course uh we just did the outlaw nation one year anniversary if you want to watch that that is out now for you all to enjoy new top 10 and the cinephile starts this week uh, on Friday with our three months of Francis Ford Coppola. People have been asking for it for five years. And finally, we are tagging the great Italian-American master uh, of Francis Ford Coppola, covering all both Godfather films as well as talking and doing a commentary on one of his movies. So come and be a part of that on The Cinephiles. Ooh, that's going to be spicy because he's sometimes a good director and sometimes a trash director. I'm excited yeah. to see some so comments. So <laughs> some very hot and cold as a director. That's not a lie, to put it mildly. And over to Frankie, my favorite after show host of all time <laughs> for Schmodown. Where can we find you and Brad Gilmore? As well. Yeah, well, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at FrankieJ29. And then the rundowns, um, we'll be doing after shows for the awards this Friday. We'll be on after that. We'll be on after the draft special the following week. And then two weeks from now or Friday, we'll be live after the draft. And then starting in February, the rundown is moving to Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Pacific. So starting February, that's where you can find the rundown live, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific on Thursdays. Absolutely. Oh, shnikey, sorry. Um, <laughs> my phone just like binged and I didn't realize it was still on. Um, thank you so much, Frankie. Oh my gosh, so much new stuff. I can't wait to see y'all cover the awards. It's going to be so much fun. And over to Mara, one of my favorite IG competitors of all time. Again, one of my favorite Schmodown competitors of all time. Where can we find you, your lovely face? And of course, your beautiful cat. Um, it's funny because he's like, I don't want to be on camera right now. Um, <laughs> I lurk. I lurk on the internet um, at that Mara. Um, I still don't understand Instagram, so just give me time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I lurk. That's where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do want to say one final thing, if I could. Frank, it was an honor to play you, man. A lot of oh, fun. As I, you know, in my head, I think that, and I forget to say it in these after things. It was great fun, brother. Oh, great, good. great uh, being out here with you guys, especially you, Jen. So. And Dwayne and Merle coming for your heads. That's what they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm Alex Mack, part of the Call of Action crew. You can find me at a under it's like a, at real underscore Alex Mack on Twitter. You can also find me just being part of the Call of Action podcast where we do a million and one stuff every single week. Everything from interviews, we are available in podcast form to a call live and everything beyond. Also, um, I'm also host a show called Cinema Bias with Video Drew, aka Drew Grant, and we're diving into a movie I haven't seen since like middle school blazing saddles <laughs> so i'm so excited <laughs> um so it's gonna be uh coming up in this next tuesday evening so definitely check it out over there but guys thank you so much have a great rest of your day keep fighting about schmo baits and we survived 2020 so that's what matters guys thank you so much